Hello everyone. T.S. Eliot says the wasteland. The working title of the wasteland was He do the police in different voices. Eliot took this title from a passage in Charles Dickens's last completed novel Our Mutual Friend. The poem has five sections. The first one is The Burial of the Dead. Eliot has taken this title from the Book of Common Prayer in the Church of England. The full title of the burial service is The Order of the Burial of the Dead. In the context of the poem, with its mythological allusion, the dead may be the fertility gods mentioned by both Western and Fraser. It begins with the famous line, April is the cruelest month. Breeding lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with spring rain. Easter is celebrated to remind humanity of Christ's resurrection. It normally falls in April. In vegetation myths too, spring brings fertility to the land and potency to the fisher king. The very thought of resurrection Spring and stirring of life fills modern man with fear. Hence, April is called the cruelest month. Eliot uses depraved May in Geronshan. Eliot alludes to the opening line of Chaucer's prologue to the Canterbury Tales in an ironic way. For there it is spring, shower, pilgrimage, prayer, cheerfulness and the like. Lines 1 to 7 depict a powerful symbolic picture of winter and receding life. Line number 8 comes a place named Starnbergersee. It's a well-known lake resort near Munich, West Germany. Elliot visited it in August 1911. Lines 9 to 18 may be a version of the conversation that Eliot had with the niece of King Ludwig, Mary Laris. Critics for a long time believed that Eliot had taken the details from the Countess's autobiography, My Past. Interestingly, Mary was a believer in fortune telling by cards. The poet's description of this letter is just a snatch of the conversation that he had with this niece and confidant of the Austrian Empress Elizabeth. For details, see the Wasteland Facsimile edited by Valerie Elliott. And also take a note of the sudden change of mood that Elliott affects in these lines. Hofgarten is an outdoor cafe. There is a famous Hofgarten in Munich in a public park with a zoo. Bindakano Rasenishdam is late on it. The translation is I am not Russian at all. I come from Lithuania, a pure German. This is a word by word transcript of a remark made to Eliot by Countess Mary Laris. In line number 19, Eliot effects another sudden change. Reference to the lines in the 6th chapter of Book of Ezekiel. In all your dwelling places, the cities shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate, that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate, and your idols may be broken and cease, and your images may be cut down, and your works may be abolished. Reference to Book of Ecclesiastes 12 Also when they shall be afraid of which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goes to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Red rock is the sacrificial altar. A holy spot may suggest a bloody revolution, but critics differ in their views.
Actually, these lines are re-rendering of the lines in an earlier form, the death of Saint Narcissus by Eliot himself. The allusion is biblical. Ecclesiastes 12:7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. In John Donne too, there is a similar passage in his devotions upon emergent occasions. What's become of man's great extent and proportion when himself shrinks himself and consumes himself to a handful of dust? Frisch wet der wind, der heimat so, mein irish kind, wo wireless do. This is a reference to music drama by Richard Wagner named Tristan and Isolde. The translation is Fresh blows the wind for home, my Irish child, where do you tarry? In this drama, a young lover in Tristan's ship sings in a casual way of his sweetheart. Hyacinth is a symbol of regrowth. In Greek mythology, a Spartan youth Hyacinthus was accidentally killed. The Hyacinth flower grew from his blood. Usually in Sparta, Hyacinth's death and rebirth are celebrated in early summer. There is a close connection between Hyacinths and vegetation cults. An inexplicable mystical experience of love. Reference to Wagoners, Tristan and Isolde. Tristan was sent to Ireland to bring Isolde to be the bride of his uncle, Mark. A portion Tristan and Isolde drink makes them eternal lovers. Ode und le das Meer. Reference to Tristan and Isolde. Tristan is on his deathbed, still anxiously looking forward to the ship carrying Isolde. His men, after surveying the sea, reports, desolate and empty the sea. Eliot might have borrowed the name from Aldo Huxley's Chrome Yellow. It is a pseudonym of one of Huxley's characters. Condos Mary Larish too might have given him a tip. There seems to be an oblique reference to Madame Blaraski too. The reference is obviously to the tarot pack of cards originally used for divination by the Egyptian priests, now cheapened by base fortune tellers. Eliot says, I am not familiar with the exact constitution of the tarot pack of cards from which I have obviously departed to suit my own convenience. The hangman, a member of the traditional pack, fits my purpose in two ways. Because he is associated in my mind with the hanged god of Fraser and because I associate him with the hooded figure in the passage of the disciple to Emmaus in part 5 of the poem, I associate quite arbitrarily with the Fisher King himself. Jesiel Weston connects the tarot pack of cards with primitive rituals. In Grey Legends, the four suits of the tarot pack, the cup, the lance, the swords, and the dish are used as the life symbols. Many of the figures on the tarot pack of cards are related to fertility rites. In Italy and France, the tarot was used in the 14th century. Nobody knows much about the origin of the tarot pack. He rolls into Phlebas in section 4. Eliot seems to project him as a fertility god whose image was thrown into the sea every summer and recovered in the spring. It may symbolize resurrections. This is a reference to William Shakespeare's The Tempest, Act 1, Scene 4. This is part of Ariel's song which tells Prince Ferdinand about the imagined drowning and transformation of his father, King Alonso. Belladonna, 
the beautiful lady a nightshade a plant from which a poisonous drug is obtained some use it as a beauty preparation to enlarge the pupil of the eye of women lady of the rocks elliot implies a contrast with virgin mary in keeping with the wasteland situation madonna of the rocks is a famous painting by leonardo da vinci the lady of unequal incompatible situations the low stature of this lady is indicated by the small letter l notice the l used in the previous line this lady anticipates the fallen lady in part 2 man with three tails identifies him with the maimed and sexually impotent fisher king wheel of fortune wheel of life a favorite image of eliot the poet might have been conscious of its eastern and western connections the wheel of life is supposed to be rotated by anubis the egyptian funeral god with a jackal's head symbolizing good and typhon the giant of greek mythology standing for evil the one eyed merchant he merges with mr eugenides the smyrna merchant eliot may be describing him as one eyed since he is depicting a side view he may also be suggesting his baseness traditionally the syrian merchants were credited with the spreading of the mysteries relating to primitive fertility rites the hanged god one of the tarot cards in it there is the figure of a man hanging by one foot from a cross t shaped eliot seems to link this figure with fraser's hanged god sacrifice to restore fertility to the land eliot may not be referring to any particular woman she may stand for any shallow fashionable modern women eliot imaginatively coins such provocative proper nouns he refers to two lines of the seven old men a poem from the flowers of evil by baudelaire a 19th century french romantic poet crowded city city full of dreams where in broad daylight the specter stops the passers by eliot must have been struck with baudelaire's paris similarity to his own wasteland and dante's inferno it never would have entered in my head there were so many men whom death had slain dandes words to virgil as he finds the damn in the vestibule of hell we heard no loud complaint no crying there no sound of grief except the sound of sighing quivering forever through the eternal air this is dandes description of the pagans in limbo who are deprived of the bliss of god's presence an anglian church designed by christopher wren after the great fire in london at the corner of kain william street and lombard street he makes a special mention of the flat sound of the last stroke of nine in england office workers begin their day at nine there may be a reference to the hours immediately after crucifixion from the third hour to the ninth darkness descended on earth this is another instance of striking a proper noun usually considered to be ezra pound one of the naval battles of the first punic war 260 bc in which the romans fought against the carthaginians for trade supremacy in the mediterranean the protagonist finding of the son of mile in the first punic war and not in the first world war suggests that all wars are one war eliot always subscribed to the view that 
the past and the present roll into each other. Read Eliot's essay, Tradition and Individual Talent. In these lines, Eliot takes us back to the central theme of the first section, the burial of the dead. Eliot obviously refers the fertility cult, burial and resurrection. Reference to The White Devil by Webster. According to Eliot, it refers to the dirge, which means a slow, sad song sung over a dead person, sung by the insane Cornelia at the time of the burial of her son Marcelo, who was murdered by his brother Flaminio. But keep the wolf for thence, that is, for to men, for with his nails he will dig them up again. Line from White Devil. Not the changes Eliot effected, wolf to dog and foe to friend. There may be a reference to Sirius, the dog star. It is closely connected with fertility cults. When the dog star rose, the waters of the Nile too rose. You hypocrite lector, more so blab, more fray. Reference to prefers to Le Fieu du Mal. This is the last line of Baudelaire's prefatory poem to the reader. The line may be translated as Hypocrite reader, my likeness, my brother. Baudelaire believed that a poet and a reader alike suffered from lethargy and dullness, which are the problems of modern man too. Just like Baudelaire, Eliot too wants to shock the reader to be alive while reading, responding to the poem. This is all about part 1, Burial of the Dead. Thank you.